Welcome to the Bosch Cast with James Boschman and Denise Young, where we talk about Manitoba real estate and everything else that's on our minds. So, welcome to episode 18 of the Bosch Cast with Rhett and Denise. Hi. Uh, and as you can tell, James is not on the on the podcast today, so we had to get the dollar store Boschman on the on the podcast today to fill in for him. <laughs> the dollar store version. <laughs> yeah, the one who's not as experienced, not as good looking. <laughs> but much, much, uh, yeah, I don't know, more fun and <laughs> young maybe, and fun. Yeah, you could say more young for sure. <laughs> young and fun. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> yep. So how's, how's things going with you these days? Well, um, myself, good. Um, I feel like um, I need to start hibernating now that the <laughs> weather turned on us. And I know we should be thankful for how nice it has been. <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, man, that wind has been cold the last few days. <laughs> it's been so weird because you think that with no snow on the ground that the weather should be nice. But then yet you get this ice cold wind shivering up your spine. And, yeah, uh, yeah. It's a weird I, feeling. I was doing a showing the other day and I'm like, got the toque all the way down <laughs> i'm still freezing yeah and they don't have to shovel any any driveways yet yeah at least but, we didn't have to shovel but yeah it'll it'll come eventually that's that's yeah. for sure yeah for sure um mm -hmm. yeah so do you got any dad jokes for us yeah i guess that's the how you start these things off is with some dad jokes so um <laughs> did i have a couple of real stinkers but <laughs> I don't, we'll see if I can do as good as, as he does. All right. So did I tell you about my printer last night? No. I was a little bit confused because it was playing music. Turns out the paper was just jamming. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> did you, good enough. I might tell my nephew that one. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Did you want to hear another paper joke? Um, I guess I'll say yes. <laughs> uh, you probably don't want to hear it. It's terrible. <laughs> oh, jeez. <Okay. laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, I got I got one more that's one more? related to this season. So okay. why does Santa use GPS? Why? Because he doesn't want to be a lost clause. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny oh. <laughs> that one's cute now you got a my little niece <laughs> yeah she'll like that one <laughs> he's got he's got to start programming getting his reindeers ready yeah just over just over one month until christmas yeah i know right that's yeah. bonkers yeah in a month from today we'll be celebrating christmas eve yeah. i mean there better be some snow on the ground it feels weird trying to get into the Christmas spirit without any, without <laughs> any snow. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yes, getting some oh. snow would definitely help. Um, <laughs> definitely. Well, that's, that's the whole part of the Christmas season. You see in the movies, there's snow. And yeah. especially being from Manitoba, you'd think that there'd be snow on the ground. And yet we have very little. Yeah. Have you ever been south for close to Christmas? Once. I've been there or I've been to... Hawaii for Christmas. Oh, yeah. And it did not feel like Christmas. You still have all your Christmas decorations and stuff, but it just doesn't feel the same. Yeah. Yeah. I've been a few different places uh, around Christmas time. And yeah, you're right. The only place that I think does a really good job of making it feel like Christmas without the snow is Disney. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's probably close, a close second. Yeah. But yeah. you're so engrossed. You have the buildings that are basically encompassing you wherever you go so yeah. you can just put fake snow on the on the roofs or whatever and <laughs> they just decorate the heck out of everything <laughs> i don't want to know what their budget is for trying to decorate all the parks and yeah well that's ridiculous. ridiculous what they are right <laughs> that's true yeah yeah we're paying for it but mm -hmm. uh yeah disney at christmas if you have to be south that's an amazing place at christmas Mm -hmm. I'll keep that in my in my back pocket just in case. Yeah. 
I always enjoy the late night Christmas party that they that they often put on. Like because they only allow. No, I think it's almost every night of the month of Christmas, and it's um, it's like from like I want to say from five till one, and it's limited tickets, so there's no lineups at all. Oh, nice. Yeah, and then there's a few. There's quite a few things that aren't open, like the like the theater things or whatever, but the rides are open and they give out like free drinks and free ice cream and cookies and popcorn. And and probably like, no screaming kids if it's past five o'clock because they'll be hidden yeah, in I bed in the next two hours. I found like the kids were happier. Like I found that during the day. I was always, I always joke. I don't feel like Disney is the happiest place on earth. People are screaming at their kids to stop crying and enjoy themselves because they paid so much money to be there. <laughs> and then the kids will scream even more because they're being yelled at. And it's, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't imagine. No, I think people try taking their kids when they're too young. Like, I know Jesse Peters is there right now and his kids look like the right ages to be like, to really enjoy it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you don't want to take kids that are super young because I don't remember what I was doing when I was three years old. <laughs> no, I know. Uh, but sometimes it's even about like having the not necessarily the memories, but the feeling of of that family togetherness, right? Yeah. So some people start like to start doing that early, but but yeah, I think <laughs> If your kids aren't enjoying it, you're not getting that nice feeling of family togetherness. You're kind of, you know, putting in this like uh, fear of <laughs> of being yelled at. <laughs> you got a bit more, a bit more resentment. Yeah. Mm. And I think it's probably more so for the parents if they want to feel that sense of family connection. Then they're going to bring their child along, even if their child doesn't know. But they don't want to leave their child at home and go there by themselves because then the, they feel a piece of them is missing yeah exactly i know when people ask me for disney advice because i used to go a lot so some people would ask me for advice i always say plan to go back and have naps because even as adults we still love to go back and have a nap at like <laughs> two o'clock and that way you can make it until like fireworks later in the evening mm -hmm. right like if you plan for a nap and it's usually hot so like we like to have a cold shower have a nap and then go back <laughs> and then when, Second and it's wind. like it's not complete second wind yeah it makes a huge difference so mm -hmm. if it's making a difference for me i can't imagine what it's doing for a little one <laughs> but the amount of steps that you put on in a day there you're easily crossing 15,000 20,000 steps yeah, and sure. there's a good chance that you're not doing that in your everyday life so you <laughs> probably you probably are tired for a good reason <laughs> yeah so a nap definitely helps <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, even if it's short, but yeah. So what's going on in the market? What are you seeing? What's going on in the market is Mr. Macklin there was making some interesting comments that got released a couple couple days ago or something. He had a conference yeah. out in Newfoundland. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, saying that he thinks that rates are probably peaked. Yeah. So I mean that's that's good news. It's just now it's a matter of when that they're going to start dropping dropping rates yeah exactly yeah their next announcements december 6th so not far off and mm -hmm. uh, you know i'm pretty sure all of us are predicting that they're going to continue to hold right now maybe they'll surprise us and drop it a little but i don't think so i'm pretty sure that they'll just hold right now yeah and I think like, it'll be february maybe when they do a small drop that's what i've heard too i've heard anywhere from end of q1 to beginning of q2 type deal for mm -hmm. for when they want to start dropping but when they're going to drop then they're going to drop fast just because with the amount of mortgage renewals that people had when they were applying covid yeah. that when they have to renew then all of a sudden they have no discretionary income to spend on other things yeah so i know myself i had to renew in june so <laughs> So you were probably getting a pretty rate at those times. Yeah, I went from a 2.59 to a 6.33. Yeah, that's yeah. not good. No. But you have, to, you have to feel for people who had variable rates when in like 2020, 2021, and then you're going up 
whatever five percentage points over the course of year and a half, two years. Yeah, you got to be kicking yourself now. Yes, I know. I I kick myself and I don't and I was happy with what I did in some ways because I kicked myself because in 2020, I always had variable up until the pandemic hit. I had a variable rate mortgage when the pandemic hit because of all the unknown, I panicked and I locked in Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh, right at the very beginning of the pandemic. I locked in, but I only locked in for three years because I'm like, well, it's not going to take that long to get out of this. Right. So I didn't want to do the full five. Mm -hmm. And and then I, that's where I kicked myself. I wish I had done the full five. <laughs> it's just like gambling. It's just like gambling. Yeah, I know, I know. Know until... But had I been on variable rate, I would have been paying a lot higher sooner than I yes. am uh, doing it this way. But um, yeah, it is what it is, right? So we have to try to deal with it. We're putting a lot less into our retirement right now until we get out of this. And uh you know, you just got to do what you can do so that you, uh, you know, you're paying an extra five fifty a month, right? Like it's that money has to come from somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> and it can't come from the grocery budget or the gas budget. <laughs> not not the necessities. <laughs> yeah. So one thing you learn when you get into this business is you learn to, to budget very well. Yes. You and do. then you start to look at everything of necessities and not necessities and yeah. Do I do I really think I should be going out for coffee every single day this week? Probably not. No. Or, but I mean, another thing that heard was when they released their CPI or inflation yeah. announcement the other day went down from 3.8 to 3.1. So that's a decent jump. Yeah. And I think most of that came from gas. Oh. If, yeah. it, if it wasn't mistaken, it, if they took the gas out then it only would have decreased to either 3.7 or 3.6. It wasn't much. So, and then I saw on Bloomberg the other day that there was a Desjardins economist on there. And he said that they target without food, fuel, and there's one more in there. But they predict that it would, inflation would get down below 2% by sometime next year, beginning of 2025. Yeah which that seems very very steep yeah but i mean it's one of those things where you just kind of write it out that inflation has come down though when like the grocery store prices are still so high like if you are comparing like grocery prices right now to grocery prices of like 2020 or 2019 like the (laughs) the prices are still so high especially on meat um but like most of the basics have gone up so much and I, I don't buy a, a ton for my, for our, I mean, we, we eat in our house, but, mm-hmm. but we, we're, we're very like, this is all the only, you know, let's say 25 things I buy every week or whatever. Um, but I really notice it when I'm like shopping for the Christmas hampers, like putting the budget together for the Christmas hampers, um, the grocery budget for the Christmas hampers, like, what I do is I put it all into say Walmart and super short it and average them out uh, looking at the non-sale items, because we can't guarantee we're going to get the sale items uh, to, to make my budget for it. And then, uh, and then we will get some sale items. So that'll come down a little bit, but you know, when you're budgeting, you have to budget worst case scenario. And I feel like they've doubled groceries have doubled in price to do a hamper you know, like, it's just crazy. Like I used to be able to do a, a four to five person family for under $250. And now it, well, it's not doubled, I guess it's like 390, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is, you know, very close to <laughs> double, you know, it's probably 40% more. Um, so yeah, I feel like, you know, it's hard to believe that it's come down you know, their inflation rate is lowered that much when we're not really seeing that at grocery stores. Yeah, that part's tough. And yeah. again, going back to your your hamper point, that just goes to show how much they really do need help. Right. Because especially yeah. with, with you, you and Jameis, and with only me buying groceries for myself, yeah. you don't seem to be affected by it so much. But once you start getting into families of four or five, six people, that grocery bill just skyrockets. 
Yeah, yeah. Put a couple of teenage boys in there and your grocery bills. Oh, it's very oh, expensive. I can't you even know, imagine. You know those teenage those teenage boys have friends too. Yeah, yeah, so right. They, well, they see free food in the fridge. You say that because I have a 16 year old niece and there are weeks where her mom's like, you can't have friends over this week because I can't afford to feed them. Wow. Right? Like, because that, that is a consideration in their weekly budget is can you afford to have friends come over this week or not? <laughs> like, that's, a, that's a harsh reality. Yeah. It is Jeez. a harsh reality, right? Like it, you know, single income uh, family, like there's not a lot of flexibility in that budget. And you're already stretching as much out as you can. You're planning for the week or however, however often you go to buy groceries Yeah. and you get someone in there to ruffle some feathers, then that throws your whole plan out for a loop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If she has like, I'll say like her boyfriend come over, I'm sure like he could probably eat them out of house and home in no time. <laughs> so yeah, I understand why her mom has to say sometimes, no, you can't have friends over, right? Like mm -hmm. I just afford to. Because yeah. do you want to tell your guests that no, you can't eat food? <laughs> it's a lot easier to say to not come over than to have them come over and then tell them to their face. <laughs> Sorry, like, you eat keep, too keep much. Your mouth shut. <laughs> You have to bring your own snacks. <laughs> <laughs> like what? What is this? A field trip? I don't want to bring my own food out. Come over. Yeah, I know. I think we've had it good for a long time. Because if I think back to being that age, I remember having to like think about that. Um, you know, if if I have friends over, do I have, do we have anything in the pantry? Or like, I remember like actually making cookies so that there would be something to give mm -hmm. my friends if they came over, right? Like, um, but that's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I think they still have some things now. Yeah. Um, the one thing I've heard is there's the stereotype that goes around uh, for some households. They're called ingredient households. Okay. So these are the type of, of people who only buy ingredients and they have nothing already pre-made or pre-packaged. Yeah. So it's very difficult to snack or to find anything because if you want something, you have to make it Yeah. and nobody wants to take the time to make anything. No, one wants to no, one, no one's going to go to the pantry and grab a potato and eat a raw potato. Yeah. It's just, that's not a fun snack. <laughs> no one wants to get the mandolin out and slice them all up and put them in the oven and make dollar fries. No. <laughs> Because the amount of time it takes, they just want something quick, easy, and yeah. throw in their mouth and forget about it. <laughs> Pizza pop to tote, put in the toaster oven, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, whole sleeve of Oreos gone. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, um, I have a couple of buyers going on right now. So live market-wise, I've been uh, showing in that... 450 to 500 range and um and noticing like a lot of stuff is kind of sitting there is a few but there is like the really good ones that are <laughs> like that, that your clients really love <laughs> those ones are still going into multiple offers of course because mm -hmm. right? like, there is still a, a lack of inventory there's not a ton to look at i was um <clears throat> wanting to show them like all the all the move-in ready houses in Niverville, for instance. Um, and there was only one resale to show them. And oh, wow. um, yeah, so yeah, there was lots of new homes to show them in that 450 or 430 to 500 range. And, um, but yeah, nothing, uh, only one resale. So like the lack of inventory is definitely still impacting the market. Um, and then, yeah, they're still kind of all over the place with areas. So we, you know, I have been in other areas too, and I'm seeing the exact same thing, right? Lack of inventory. Um, the stuff that is sitting usually has, I won't say usually has a big problem, but like, um, but has things wrong, right? Like it either, it doesn't show very well. Like I, we, we looked at one that was so dirty. It's hard to imagine living in it. Right. Like, and, uh, so so yeah, it's going to sit. It's probably, it, I think it's priced properly for that area, <laughs> but it's so dirty. It's hard for people to imagine what it would be like to live in it. Right. So I mm -hmm. think that's why it's sitting on the market. So nothing really wrong with it. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, but yeah. Um, and then, yeah, 
just other areas. And, and, and like some of these are like city areas we, we've looked in and, and then, yeah, just watching the market, like watching the, our watch lists that we always check out every day. I still seeing, you know, at least a dozen a week going well over asking. So obviously mar multiple offers because people don't pay over asking. <laughs> There's another mm -hmm. couple offers. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm seeing in, you know, live in the Winnipeg market or Winnipeg and surrounding areas. Um, and I was talking to a couple of our mortgage specialists, mortgage brokers, and it looks like the median rate right now is 5.69 and promos are hitting in around 5.39 and 5.24. Holy. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Ooh, that was texted to me this morning. So that's very, very current. Um, so yeah, interesting. It would be interesting to know what the terms on that are. That's um, true. I need yeah. some more details. In, in that there, you know, bad penalties when you get that really crazy promo rate. So I would be cautious going into that, but <laughs> yeah. it's nice to see the the bright stars in front of you, but you gotta <laughs> exactly. travel a little further to see what's behind. Yeah, yeah. What am I getting myself into? But none of that. none of the nonetheless, it's a pretty it's a pretty good rate for for these times. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. And it's one of those things where I think regardless of if we're in a buyer's or a seller's market, there's always gonna be people wanting to buy or sell. Oh, it's absolutely. just whoever it's whoever's qualified and is willing to make that decision. Yes. My, my opinion right now is even though it is, um, it is a buyer's market and um, rates aren't looking great, but because it's a buyer's market, it's a great time to buy in the sense that like a rate is only for a couple of years, right? You don't have to lock that in for five. You could lock that in for two. I mean, it might be slightly higher if you lock in only at two, but then you can, renew in a couple of years at like rates that have like more leveled out, right? We're never going to see COVID rates again. Um, so like that's dreaming. We're not, we're not going to see mm -hmm. that. Um, might as well forget about that. But once you can get into the market, um, you know, the one nice thing about getting into the market right now is the ability to put more conditions, the ability to take your time making a decision, your ability to likely have an inspection, your right? Like, it's not just about rate. It's not about uh, how much money am I going to save? Yes, saving money is important. You know what? You're going to save money by not having to bid 100000 over asking. Um, <laughs> so yes, you might have a higher rate for a couple of years, but that um, savings and that peace of mind that you're going to have, like when we go back to when rates were at their lowest, the market was at its craziest we were allowed to look at a house for 30 minutes with just the buyers and their realtor because of COVID restrictions, right? And it was hard to get appointments. So to try to get a second appointment was next to impossible half the time. You couldn't write inspections on. The, the actual feeling of satisfaction was so low. There was like way more complaints at the lawyer's office after, right? So I mean, how can you look at everything in 30 minutes, right? Like, how does, possible. A, how does a buyer inspect the entire property? And Manitoba is a buyer beware pro uh, province. So so if you don't ask the, the questions and learn about the property, it's on you. And that's why there was so much dissatisfaction, right? So, it, it, you know, I just feel like now you can take your time looking at a property. You can book several appointments if you need more time. You can have an inspection before or after because there's time to. Whereas, like, even before, like, yeah, you could have booked it before your an inspection before the offer. But likelihood of actually getting a time slot, like we had one listing. This is just one example out of many. But we had one listing where our clients had moved out and we had solid appointments because they were only allowed to have one appointment at a time from seven in the morning till 11 o'clock at night for five solid days right because there was so much pent-up and uh demand in that specific neighborhood and that stop that house was the smallest two-story that had sold in that area so he had priced it under what the other ones had sold for because it was smaller and it sold for higher than any of the other ones oh which is goodness. ridiculous <laughs> right like 
but there was so much pent up demand that the market mm -hmm. did that, right? Well, and going back to that point, if you look at the rates now, and I mean, they're still, they're still decent for, for these they're times, yeah. but you go fast forward maybe six months into the future when then it becomes a seller's market and you're bidding 50, 60, 70 over asking. And then rates any, are only gonna maybe have dropped 0.5. So any savings that you would have made from the rates, they're going to be completely negated by the amount that you're spending on the total purchase price. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why I, I like, I've been telling my buyers buy right now, if we can find something to buy, let's buy it now. Like if you, if you can see yourself in this, like let's not worry about nickels and dimes when we should be worrying about the big money, right? Like mm -hmm. um, buy right now. Anyway, that's some I could, I could pretty solid advice. <laughs> I could talk about that all day. Um, so I'll move. Oh, I never moved to talk about it. So that was, see, I didn't move any of my tickers. See, anymore. you're, even though I'm not, I shouldn't be the host. You're the host. You're moving the, yeah. the, the banner. <laughs> I'm going to move to the next one now, though. Story time, adventures in real estate. Okay. You tell, so, you tell your story. I have, I have a story, but it's not a very long story, but, um, but it's cute and a little funny and also uh, a good lesson. Uh, <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm calling my story. The cat came back. So um, I had a listing way back. I don't even remember what year it was. Um, it had to have been a while ago. It's my grandma's 80th birthday. So I was away for the open house. Uh, <laughs> that's how I remember. And uh, I was away for the open house and I had someone else doing the open house. Um, so my clients had, gotten the house ready, moved out, moved in with her sister, took all the, she had like four or five cats and a dog and stuff. So it was best for them to move out to make sure that all the animals were out of the way and not going to be uh, <laughs> escaping uh, during showings and stuff like that. Right. So she, um, they moved to a different part of it was that the listing was in St. Mattel and uh, they moved over to uh Nyako place, which is actually across the same river, right? And um, so yeah, they uh, they moved out. And um, during the open house, my uh, colleague that was doing the open house for me, since I was in BC visiting my grandma for her 80th birthday, um, she texts me, "This cat's trying to get in the house," <laughs> and she takes a picture of it. And I'm like, "Oh no, that's I don't remember the cat's name, but I knew the cat because." this client was also a friend of mine and uh I'm like, oh no i'll text the owner and let her know that the cat's at the house right and uh the cat liked to escape it was it had previously been a farm cat so it would like always escape from the house right and uh, they always had such a hard time not letting it escape <laughs> and wander about so um it would come it came back to the house during the open house and then um so she had let it in and then my client went and got the cat, took her back. By the end of the open house, the cat was back again. What the heck? <laughs> the cat did not want to stay at Auntie's. And, uh, and then, so, so, okay, that's fine. We sell the house, they get ready and they move and they move to the country. So they're like way out, um, I'll say like near Dufresne, Manitoba, right? So it's, it, it's not like, they didn't move out to like McGregor's, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? It's still fairly close to the city, but it's like a long ways to this, you know, from St. Mattel. Anyway, so they move out there and again, the cat wants to get outside all the time and, you know, the odd time slips past them and I'd get a call from the, from the new buyer of the house. This cat's trying to get in my house. Is this the seller's cat with a picture of him? Oh, yeah, that's him. So this cat went from Dufresne back to the old house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my clients go and pick up her cat and then take her home. Manage to keep it inside, like, longer than ever. Because this cat, like, he's miserable, miserable not going outside. <laughs> anyway, so I don't know. I think, I don't even think it was two weeks later, the cats at the house in St. Mattel again. And um, <laughs> the cat just kept showing up there. And around the third or fourth time, 
the buyer's like, oh, it's so, she's such a nice cat. Yeah, don't you don't even have to hurry to pick her up. <laughs> she's just going to come back anyway. And uh, they they had a chat and they decided that uh, the cat would stay at the house because um, obviously this cat wanted to be at the house. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she would let the cat out to, you know, into the backyard and he wouldn't or she wouldn't leave at all. She wouldn't even like explore the neighborhood. She would stay in her backyard <laughs> and come back in her house. That so she was definitely more attached to the house than the people. <laughs> mm -hmm. But those farm cats are so slick; they can get out of anywhere. I know, right? And I'm like, gee whiz, like, and you don't even notice, right? So, oh. yeah. and tough as nails. That's yeah. another, that's another thing. You think something so fragile like a cat would crumple under pressure but <laughs> no i remember having a cat when i was a little kid and um it was uh a farm cat we had brought it home from a farm near sprague manitoba where my stepdad used to live or my step grandpa used to live i mean and um so we had brought this cat and we uh, i named it cuddles <laughs> and it would cuddle in bed with me and everything <laughs> and then um <laughs> And then when it was out, because uh, back then we, you always let your cats out, even in the city, right? I don't recall. I was little, so I don't know if there was a bylaw against it or not, but uh, <laughs> when everyone's cats were out back then. And um, <laughs> we had uh, German Shepherds on this side and Doberman Pinchers on this side. And my cat would, would walk along the fence, daring them to bark at her. <laughs> And oh if they barked, you'd swat them across the faces and you'd hear yeah! from the poor dog. <laughs> <laughs> just a taunter and a showman. Oh yeah. my. Yeah. Really They're, those cats are a different different breed, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think it was part Siamese because it was so loud. We had a big old three-story house in Transcona and I could be in my room on the third floor and hear my cat at the at the back door. Yeah, that's a bit, that's a bit nuts. <laughs> Maybe that says more about our insulation than it does about the cats meowing, but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. What do you say about insulation? Are we talking about renos? <laughs> yeah, we are going to talk about <laughs> renos, yes. <laughs> what a great transition into our topic of the of the day. I, oh, I did manage to change you, it. So, you yeah, did, that go. looks, looks good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so... I thought it would be a good idea to talk about um, the affordable high impact DIY renovations um, that either have a high impact on sale or enjoyability. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing I like to mention before we talk about like the renovations that we like to do is to make sure that the stuff that needs to be done is done. Often we see houses that have been like, you know, prettied up and have a beautiful kitchen, but yet the shingles are still in disrepair and then the house ends up leaking or, or whatnot. So it's always good to take care of the, the half dues before the, the nice things. That's true. Um, yeah. Cause it, shingles might not affect your uh, return on investment or there might not be a huge return on investment on shingles, but it, they could, they could actually stop a sale if they're bad, right? Like um, whether it be um, the people, people just don't want to do it because they, you know, it's not a fun thing to do. Or um, if they're bad enough, even the, the mortgage lender, if they decide to do an appraisal, they could decide that they're too, too poor. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to try and negate any future damage as well, because you could simply mm -hmm. just take the cost of the shingles and, do them then and there but yeah. then you don't know what future damage could hold from absolutely from that. once that roof starts leaking now you have insulation that's been damaged now you have um possibly drywall possibly electrical cold, possibly <laughs> yes exactly so many other things yeah but um uh, but yeah so let's get to our five diy jobs that you can uh, do with considerable impact mm -hmm. so first one is painting and staining so something that's super simple to do, super easy, but can yeah. really bright, brighten up or liven, liven a space. Yes. I should have actually pulled out some before and after pictures of even just this room. 
Mm -hmm. because this room was was like a taupe. And so when my husband painted it during COVID, <laughs> it, what a difference it made going from taupe to this, uh, it's like a grayish because mm -hmm. I have like too much brown in my house to go completely gray, but, um, <laughs> but, but it made a huge impact. Um, you know, some important things to remember when you're painting on your own is to keep it neat and tidy. Um, you want it to look like a professional job because if you're getting like blue paint on the ceiling, that is not going to look good. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Make, making sure you're taping and keeping yeah. a clean service area. Probably exactly. even best to take the stuff out if you're thinking about moving and just in the process, instead of moving stuff out of the room, you're going to do it eventually. So just do it then, then you have no risk of getting paint on anything else. And then you can right. tape off the room and, and go from there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it can uh, make impact by, by bringing it to more up-to-date colors, as well as we tend to wear and tear on our walls anyway. There's usually scuffs and nicks and whatever. So get all that repaired and then paint and everything looks much newer. Mm-hmm. And the same with same with staining. If you have hardwood floors, yes, then it helps brings that sheen back and livens yeah. them up. Makes them seem yeah. like you just put new new floors in, but exactly new, new exterior Recent floors is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Very most likely cool. you'll get a good ROI on on painting yeah. and then staining as well. Yeah, I think. Um, NAR didn't have the stats on painting the interior for the ROI, but for staining or refinishing the floors, I think it was somewhere in the, it was well over a hundred percent. Yeah. It was a hundred and 118 percent. Yeah. So yeah. you're, you're yeah. making money with it. So right. Good, yeah. It's good idea. Really high impact on, uh, on your return on, on investment. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, that does bring us into replacing flooring as number two, uh, if you're replacing the flooring, I think that uh, NAR had said that the ROI was around 160. I don't have that one in front of me. Sorry. Uh, um, oh, so it's oh the new hardwood refinish. That one was 147, and then the yeah. new flooring was 118. Okay, there we so go. that makes. I knew, there I, knew, go. I knew those two were both very high. Yeah. Uh, for flooring, because yeah, flooring impacts the look of your entire house, right? So. I find um, the majority of people are trying to get rid of carpet. There's the odd person that wants carpet. Uh, but if you're going from carpet or old laminates to a newer uh, hardwood, or um, I was in a house the other day that had parquet floors. And I mean, they weren't in terrible condition. If you stained them, they would definitely be a good temporary floor until someone could afford to put in brand new flooring, right? Like mm -hmm. it would definitely look better than the worn out carpets that are in many of the rooms. I'd be ripping that out and put in and refinishing those parquets uh, for now. <laughs> but you <laughs> see, you still even see carpet in a lot of new builds too. Like maybe oh, only yeah. in, in the secondary bedrooms or in an attic or something, but yeah, they're just not the main, not usually your the main floor. Main. No. Yeah. And yeah. vinyls, vinyls and, laminates are getting so good these days that you really yeah. don't even notice the difference between that hardwood with with some stuff i know there is so many nice vinyls out now too like i'm so impressed with some of them they look like real tile until you're actually walking on them or touching them mm -hmm. <laughs> right or um or yeah there's just so many nice vinyls now um yeah, so I think, yeah, flooring is definitely an easy one. And if you're doing like um, a vinyl plank or um, laminates, those are easy click together. Those are really easy do-it-yourself projects. And there's a million YouTube videos on how to, you know, cut the edges if you have to like go around a corner or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, YouTube is YouTube is amazing in that in that <laughs> regard. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But yeah, those are really easy uh, floorings to do by yourself instead of, uh, you know, because we're trying to do a DIY, right? Like, so yeah, those try, ones are easy. Try not to do the, the 50, 60, $70,000 rentals before potentially selling. Yeah, especially right. if you maybe have a property that could, or you have a vision for it, but you know that you're not going to be living in it for very long, then 
it's better to give someone else the vision and let them pay the money to make those changes and rather than you do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if you are going to do a big reno, make sure you're taking out permits for whatever needs to be done. That's, that's true. And that's also difficult. talking to your, to your realtor, yeah. uh, try to get a, a market analysis done because if you're going to do a big reno and only be living in your house for a few years, then if you're going to be having a nicely renovated house in a market that's, or in an area that's not too, doesn't replicate that, then it's going to devalue yeah. your house and you're not going to get your money back for your, yeah, you don't for your want rentals. to improve if the, if the average house price is around 450 in your neighborhood and nothing has ever gone over 500, you don't want to be making your house worth 550 because it will be very hard to sell it. Mm -hmm. Right. It makes it a lot harder to sell. That being said, <laughs> um, you know, a good realtor will be able to tell you if, if they think it's possible or not. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, another high impact, uh, affordable, um, <laughs> upgrade is led lighting. Mm. So we did that. Um, I, that's another one we did when we painted actually. And it was huge. Like the change, like even having the nicer color paint and then changing the, the lighting that the paint just looked way nicer <laughs> than with the incandescent lighting. And, um, everything looked nicer. It looked brighter, lighter. You do want to make sure you're using the right tones. And there is also um, hydro bonuses. Like we had the instant rebates right at the till when we ordered our bulbs or when we bought our bulbs. I think we got five or $10 back because we had bought like um, the bulbs he had bought were almost $20 each. Okay. Um yeah, and then he had bought a couple of new light fixtures. But again, if you're doing light fixtures, uh, you don't need to have a permit, but you want to make sure that you have someone that knows how to do electrical. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's what's important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I luckily have someone that can do electrical, but um, you know, I have heard of some people looking at up that on YouTube. I'm a little leery about doing electrical myself without actually learning it. Because um, <laughs> usually by learning, then you end up doing something wrong, and that could mean <laughs> shocking yourself. Or yeah, yeah. Yourself. My husband does have a little tester he uses to make sure that the line has been shut off, just to make sure. Because you know, you go downstairs and you shut off the breaker, and it's so easy to not turn off the right one. So he's done enough electrical in his life that he's been shocked several times. <laughs> so he knows not to trust that, <laughs> that this line has actually been shut off. Mm -hmm. So he does use his little tester to make sure that it is dead. <laughs> it's a smart man. <laughs> yeah. and, and the nice thing about those led lights too, is that they can make a room seem bigger also. Yes. It's not so dark and then the corners don't get any light, but if you can get a couple of nice LEDs then opens up the corners and yeah. suddenly you seem you have space that you didn't have before. Exactly. Exactly. And they seem to last a lot longer. Um, maybe it's because we put dimmers on some of them. Some of them are so bright. We had to put dimmers on them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, huge impact, huge impact there. Um, yeah. The tone What's the difference. And can't you go to home Depot or whatever? And then they, have the the sliding scale of the light yeah. they have like a demo light and then you can match it with your paint or whatever to give yeah, it up. exactly yeah that's, perfectly. that's pretty smart yeah and that way you don't have to buy some and guess and go home and realize you got the wrong tone <laughs> well most of those places do have good return policies at least so if you do buy the wrong tone um you can take it back the the fixtures i know you can't uh, let's see if we can see like the no you can't see the one i have in this room um the one I have in this room has a, a switch on it, actually. This one was bought at Costco, and it has a switch to go to, um, like, warm or cool. Oh, smart. Yeah, I love it, because then you literally can see how it feels in the room with whatever warm, and then change it to cool and feel how it feels in the room, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that way, if you don't like it one way, you're going to like it the other way. Well, at least you have <laughs> options and you're not stuck with just yeah, one. exactly. I think there might have even been another switch for um, 
I don't remember what the other setting is. I'm pretty sure these ones had two settings on them. Yeah. Beauty of Costco. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Costco can be amazing. Um, very, very true. <laughs> for this kind of stuff, yeah. Same with for flooring. If you're buying your click together flooring, the Costco flooring is always good quality and they often have it um, a much cheaper price than you can buy elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some other small improvements uh, to livability uh, that make big impact are things like um, the back, uh, putting up a backsplash. Mm -hmm. um, again, that's other Costco, uh, they have those peel and stick ones that look like tiles, right? The, and then they just stick right to the. And the, you can. Literally are we, are we making this uh, a Costco sponsored video? Are we? Sponsored? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you can buy those elsewhere. I just, I know my someone in my family did them, and they bought them at Costco, and just like you literally cut them with scissors, and then. Mm -hmm. put it on. <laughs> And uh, looked gorgeous. Uh, closet upgrades. Um, if you're wanting to put in like organizers or um, I love the pack system from Ikea. See, Those are nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> 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 the pack system from Ikea is beautiful. And mm -hmm. it's amazing, like the kind of impact that can make, you know, to especially your enjoyability of the pro property, uh, not just uh, resale. Um New appliances, that's a lot more expensive and not, you know, but it is definitely uh, easy, you know, <laughs> uh, to do. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, buy new appliances and get rid of the old ones. And what about um, like handles and such for kitchen cabinets and yeah, stuff? Yeah, changing the handles or painting the cupboards, it, that takes us back to like painting, right? Really, we should have brought up cupboards. You could easily refinish the cupboards, whether it be staining or painting. And uh, it, it can have a huge impact on the the kitchen. I had a listing that we were having a hard time selling. It was uh, a late fall when we were trying to sell it. So it was partly the market at the time, but also partly the comments, the feedback we were getting. A, it was too close to the train tracks. Well, we can't change it that. So <laughs> nothing we can do about that. And the other feedback was that it the kitchen was oak cupboards and it felt very outdated. And uh, well, we might be able to do something about that. So um, my client looked into the different stains and whatnot, and she found one that looked like she'd be able to use it herself. And she was able to put it on with a rag and do the entire kitchen herself. And it looked amazing. So that was when darker was actually more popular than lighter. So a little easier to take your oak cupboards to darker than lighter. <laughs> right. So it did. Um, it, yeah, they were gorgeous. So she went to like an espresso color, which was very popular at the time. And, uh, and just huge impact, huge impact. And mm -hmm. then also put on new handles. That was massive. We can't put a coat of paint on the train tracks. We get rid of the train. Yeah, we can't. So get rid of you the got to <laughs> think of the next best thing. Yeah, yeah. But honestly, like when we relisted it in, uh, like we had taken it off over Christmas, January, relisted beginning of February, it sold within a couple of weeks after that. Wow. Yeah, so huge impact. But I mean, again, the market usually is starting to pick up late January, and February. So it could have been a market thing. It could have been a combination of both, right? Like, but um, yeah, we had, to, we wanted to take it off for Christmas because she didn't want to have showings like last minute while she's trying to get ready for Christmas. So, um, but you want to do everything that you, that you can and try and make your house more. Yeah. So then she took the week available. after Christmas that she had off and stained the kitchen. And then it like, I feel like it made a huge impact. It looked so, so different mm -hmm. and definitely more modern. Um, you know, if you're wanting to go lighter, you might have to go with paint, right? Um, cause it's hard to stain lighter and I don't know how white stain would look. I don't know. I'd have to look at it in real Yeah, light. that might be a little bit, a little bit tricky. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if that would do it for making it look more modern, right? Like it would look different. <laughs> yeah. But and there's definitely some nice cover paints out there. That's true. And it's pretty pretty low risk also because if people want to completely replace the the cupboards, then you're not pouring into a whole new cupboard system. Right. But it's just the you're giving the illusion that 
it's more modern. So yeah. it's less risk for the seller. Exactly. You could do a refacing. So just by doors. Yeah. That's a good yeah. idea too. Yeah. It's a little bit more expensive, but not, um, not buying a whole new kitchen <laughs> mm -hmm. and still updates it. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the day. If you're a seller, you want to try and make money. You don't want to try and break even. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But some of it's about saleability too, right? So sometimes Very it's about making your house more saleable. Yeah. So what's our, what's our last point that we, that we well, have I, here? I think our small improvements to livability and the last one was insulation. And um, you were, I don't know, one of us was going to talk about Hydro as a program for that. Yeah, so then you could, I believe it, you can go online and they have a list of requirements that you need you need to meet. But if you wanted to apply to have some more insulation installed on your home, then Hydro would be more than willing to give you a rebate for, for that. Um, yeah, you do have to apply first. And then um, I had friends rent the equipment and buy the insulation once they were approved and they did the job themselves and then it ended up being free because they got all the money they spent back so um that was really so that's nice. pretty sweet and yeah. then you can also make that when you're selling the place that there's new insulation so that their hydro and electrical bill should or hydro depending what they're heating their their house right. with yeah. but you don't have to spend so much on heating your home because it should insulate a lot better yes Yes, it should uh, have a huge impact on the bills, on the actual bills. I think she had printed off her actual for their prior year and the year after they did it. And then we're able to show like what impact it made because they had done it about maybe a year and a half prior to them selling your house. Yeah. Oh, so they'd have a good, good chunk of data to refer back to. Yeah. Looks like we missed one. We missed landscaping. We missed landscaping completely. It's the only one that's on the outside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, first impressions are everything, and you don't enter the house from the inside first. You look at it from the outside. That's so right. So a good a good front lawn and even even backyard, too, can make a, make a big difference on curb appeal or livability. Yeah. Yeah. I One of the houses I showed this week, they had um, – I always Google street view stuff so you can see how it did look and then how it does look. Right. And, uh, <laughs> Google street view, you couldn't see the house at all in the Google street view because there was so many big trees and bushes and everything right. Like in the front yard and, and now like they have it listed and it's all like gone. <laughs> <laughs> so now you can actually different. see the house. Yeah. You can actually see the house and it is impactful. Um, Another house I sold this this past year, when uh, we went to look at it, we literally could not see the front of the house. She had, It was a house with an attached front garage. So you saw the garage in the driveway and you saw like there was a sidewalk that went in, but it was like a tunnel to the front door because there were so many bushes and trees in the front yard. They were just so overgrown. Mm. And um, when she moved in, she took all those bushes and trees down and you can actually see the front of the house now and it's so how like, do they take pictures with, uh well it's hilarious because they literally took pictures of the front driveway right like you don't see any of the house in them. but i feel like it really impacted their sale because they didn't get multiple offers and they ended up reducing their price by fifty thousand dollars wow yeah right so i feel like my client got a really great deal on this house because of the few things that needed to be done outside now that being said, some of them were bigger items. It needs fencing, which is going to be expensive because that's a big yard. But, but that being said, the stuff in her na in that neighborhood was selling fifty thousand more. And same age of houses, they all need stuff, mm -hmm. right? Like every house needs something, <laughs> right? So that one needed fencing. Everything else had already been done. But that's and not they, one of those instances where you can cut down the trees. Like you'd have to, have. yeah. And that's not cheap. If you, yeah, it's not cheap. It cost my client about almost three thousand dollars. But if if you think about it, like because she had someone do it, um, and the one tree was so big that there's no way you're doing that yourself. It would be dangerous. 
Um, so yeah, she, I think she paid about three grand to get that done. And then, um, I, she hasn't like refinished the yard yet. So that's going to cost a little bit of money, but I mean, it's, it's not even a huge space. So like what's saw going to be like maybe another two grand to re mm -hmm. everything. Uh, so $5,000 to not have lost 50. That's a, you right? take that every day. Absolutely. So. You would. Yeah. Now, so, I don't know, maybe they had uh, a special relationship with the squirrel that was living in the tree and didn't want to take his house away. I don't know. Um, <laughs> they didn't want to, they were being evicted, so they didn't want to evict the, <laughs> the yeah. neighboring animals. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, um, so that's some of the things that make a big impact for landscaping, but even adding some like color, some flowers or mm -hmm. um, a new layer of mulch. So it looks fresh and not like making sure your lawn is cut and maintained and no dog poop. And uh, <laughs> yeah, take notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, also, um, you know, we talked about restaining uh, things like flooring, but restaining things like decks or all those old uh, Barkman bricks it's nice to pull them up and lay them fresh. Like it doesn't cost you. It's, it's man labor, muscle labor, but mm -hmm. it's, but it's um, really impactful because it makes them look so much more fresh when they're freshly laid a little bit, maybe a, or uh, a couple of yards of sand to make them look nice. Right. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Like even if you have a uh, wood siding, you could paint the siding. Yeah, absolutely. Gets a new life to the exterior. Yeah. I've also seen people spray the stucco, which makes it look way better. Cause it like, yeah, especially if you've had patches over the years or anything like that, or any like water staining on the stucco or whatnot, spraying it can be very impactful. So yeah. what color did they do? Uh, I, <laughs> the clients that I had, I mean, this is several years ago, they went to a beige um, from the, you know, very, what is it like a whitish color, whitish gray or whatever they went to a beige. Um, I would, I don't know if I'd pick that color now. I think I'd maybe go gray or <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, but like, even going white again would be nice. Yeah. You're not doing any bold colors. You're not doing a black or a red stucco. No, or... I did see someone paint the front brick on one of these old uh, transcona houses um, with black. And then they did the stucco in uh like a light gray and i'm like holy mackerel that like totally changed the look of this like little old like you know like dirty stucco and uh red brick <laughs> it's amazing the power of paint right yeah paint is amazing <laughs> so yeah lots of ideas lots of ideas another one for a small improvement is those entryways yeah, um, doing something in the entryway, which is one of my like we were going to talk about our favorite feature upgrades, and that is one of my favorite feature upgrades is the entryway. Again, first impression as soon as you walk in the house, if you have a decent sized foyer and can make it, you know, some of these houses don't have front closets, and even if they do, they're they're hard to access. They're behind the door or whatever. If you can change it up and have it so that you have like uh, some hooks and some pretty um cubbies pinterest has a million ideas <laughs> and there's so many cute things that you can do instead of that uh very hard to use front closet if there is a closet even that's true you gotta yeah. make do with what you have yeah um we have um well we'll talk about that uh when we talk about our what are your favorite feature upgrades well one of the things that i like it's a little bit more difficult to do in a renovation type standpoint but if you have the option to add a little door or uh, it could be a small doggy door or a bigger door into your pantry from the garage oh, and yeah. then you can just shovel all your groceries in through there and you're not walking around trying to make umpteen trips yeah, just to make access, it easy access to the pantry from the garage is amazing for sure yeah and then another one that i like is making feature walls yeah so you just paint only one wall in your room or you put wallpaper or reclaimed wood or something. And then yeah. it just draws your eyes to that one point. And it's usually pretty affordable. You're not spending too much on doing that, but it can add some character to a room and make a big yeah. difference. 
Yeah, huge impact. Yeah, I love, especially in the primary bedroom, when they do like the reclaimed wood in behind the bed. That's always pretty. Yeah, it's a very smart look. You just got to make sure that that wood doesn't swell. No, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. If you're getting if you're getting the real stuff, you can go to uh, Home Depot or Rona or whatever and get fake stuff, but yeah, not not really the same. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I I think I think one of the projects I did we we did um, stuff from Home Depot, but I know like other people who have done like real barn board and stuff like that. And yeah, I don't know. Was there a smell? Maybe they sealed it or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Good question to ask, nonetheless. Yeah, right. Um, so my picks for favorite features are the mudroom or foyer cubby slash organizers. I absolutely love like when you have like a space for each person, uh, places to hang their coats, the cubbies for all their stuff, maybe backpacks and stuff like that. I feel like it's it just organizes the whole area. I feel like when I'm showing houses and showing a house with that buyers are always like really drawn to it. It's like, so like, I feel like it has impact in that way as well, but I also feel like it's very functional. Especially if you have kids too and yeah. you're rushing to send them out for school or whatnot. And <laughs> yeah. Like you don't have to look around for their stuff. You just go, here's your copy, be grab your jacket and your shoes and get out the door. Yeah. It should prevent them from having to search the house for that other shoe. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> They'll still find a way to throw it across the room or make it in the basement Maybe. or bl Maybe. blame it, blame it on the dog. Yeah. The dog took it. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I love those ones. I also love a main floor laundry room, not just, mm -hmm. a, not just like a closet or in the mud room. I like a separate room. If you were to come to our show home at 98, 100 Grand Point Meadows, it's our condo show home. And, um, I, I, the actual foyer and whole front area of the house where it's like mudroom slash foyer is exactly what I love. You have a separate laundry room. You have a beautiful, huge foyer that you could easily put cubbies or some sort of really nice organizer family, con you know, control center area right there in the, in the foyer. And it would be pretty there's also a nice big closet as well. So like tons of space. And that laundry room has a door that you could actually close <laughs> so that people don't have to see your messy laundry room because even when they're organized, they're messy. You have laundry all the time. Um, I love that laundry room. I think I would put a, like it's, it's you could easily have side-by-side -side laundry in there. But um, I think I would do stacking and have the sink next to it mm -hmm. to have that laundry sink. And then also put like some uh, bars above so that you have somewhere to hang your clothes that don't go in the dryer. Like even though it's a small room, I think you can make big impact with it. And there would still be room to put a freezer on the other wall because there's a plug there. I You can tell I really... <laughs> You've thought you about know. this a lot. <laughs> I, I feel like it would be like the perfect size laundry room uh, with other like utilitarian with it, with that, and, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now I think there's more emphasis on making sure that your laundry room is functional. A, because everyone's doing laundry. That's not going to go away. B yeah. is that people are staying in their homes longer. So once you start getting up to 60 and above and you're still living at home, you're not traveling up and down stairs to do laundry. You want to yeah, make that as easy harder. as possible. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So making that dedicated space as easy as possible and enjoyable for you to do your laundry, then by all exactly. means, make it your make it your own. Yeah. And not everyone can have like our other show home has an amazing laundry room with cupboards and everything but not everyone can, has the space for that much of a room, right? Like, mm -hmm. so even to have a smaller space, like what's in the condo, it can still have a big impact because if it's like well thought out, right? Um, another one that I really loved <laughs> is actually not one of our listings, but it had um, the laundry room was attached to the walk-in closet. So you could either enter from the hall but it also had a pass-through door to the 
walk-in closet of the primary bedroom. Smart. And I'm like, you can literally take your stuff and hang it in your closet with this motion. <laughs> that sounds like it. my dream. Then I don't have to, I can just show all my clothes in the washer and then they just magically get washed. I don't yeah. know who's going to start it. It's not going to be me. <laughs> Well, Red, that is my dream because I have been trying to talk my husband into putting the laundry in my walk-in closet. You like should. Right in my walk-in closet. It's it's a win-win for everyone. <laughs> yeah, because we don't we can't figure out how to make main floor laundry here unless we put it in the main floor. Uh, the, sorry, the primary bedroom closet. I think and, you have uh, only one option. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'm like, but yeah, I know he's like that'll take away too much of the closet. I'm like, if we put a stacking in there, uh, it, it only takes up a small amount of space. And I f feel like it makes the whole area way more usable. And then if we mm -hmm. upgraded the rest of the closet to pack system, you're making the whole space more usable than it currently is anyway. So how much do you think about closets? Cause in washing machines, <laughs> it sounds like that's all you think about. You got plans well, or I've been married for 29 years. So I've been doing two people's laundry for 29 years. <laughs> and and the last 10 of it, <laughs> the last 10 of it, my laundry is in the basement, which doesn't sound too bad, but my primary bedroom is on the north side of my house and the stairs to the basement are on the south end of the house and the laundry room in the basement is on the north end of the house. Mm. So it's as far away from my primary bedroom closet as it could be. <laughs> so, and, and you don't have the luxury of like a shoot or something. Because at my parents' house, where our bathroom is upstairs, there's a chute that goes from there underneath the closet to yeah. the laundry room downstairs. So you don't have to yeah. carry it. You can just open the chute, shove it down, and then it's there. Yeah. But I don't find don't... the carry down that bad. I find the carry up worse. Mm. <laughs> yeah so yeah no i've been trying to talk him into doing that but so far he hates plumbing he hates doing plumbing so that has prevented him from doing this yeah <laughs> get get someone else to do it or i don't know i i agree yeah because <laughs> if he's I, if he doesn't want to do it then i think in his mind he's he's set on his ways <laughs> yeah likely is not gonna happen yeah, likely not going to happen. I'm just looking at our notes to make sure we didn't miss anything else. Looks like we caught it all. I think so. <laughs> so we're just, we're at the point of going to, uh, oh, here, let's press this so that we have giving we're flowers. Gonna, we're going to give some flowers away? Give some flowers, yeah. Um, oh, you give some flowers first. Okay, my picks of the, of the I'll say the week, but probably a little bit more than a week, um, are Chris Lang at Lang Cochlear Law. Um, he has, Chris has always been amazing uh, since he started his firm in Transcona. Um, he, he was a very, um, very much a go-getter right from the start. My very first deal with him was, was crazy because um, my client had actually chosen a different lawyer in Transcona to deal with. And she was called four days before possession and told that they're already dealing with the seller. So couldn't also represent her and with four days and he was going on holidays and a bu bunch of other reasons why he he didn't realize he was representing her he had been sent the deal from the other side and from me and they ended up all, both in the same file so wow. anyway so I called Chris <laughs> who had just started his firm and had opened up a a, a location basically within the same block as this lawyer. And um, Chris went across the street, got the file. My client was working with TD Bank, which was on the corner <laughs> uh, of the block of the same block, went down to the bank and asked for the mortgage instructions. <laughs> and uh, like he really, really came through for us. And uh, so I think her possession was only delayed by one day, you know, just to make sure he got everything done. And I think it took the mortgage instructions a little longer. Um, anyway, he got her done. She was thrilled. She couldn't believe that he pulled it off with <laughs> such little time and, and, um, yeah, very happy, very happy. And, um, you know, the majority of people I've sent to him say the same thing, you know, like when, when 
when you do need to get his assistance on something further, he's uh, reactive. So that's good. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what you want when you're dealing with such a large transaction as buying a house. You want someone who's able to communicate with you and keep you up to date. So yes, to have yeah. someone like Chris is at your side. Yeah. Is and from the realtor side, I feel like, um, they are really good at communicating like where the file is at, at times where like, especially on longer transactions that have long possession dates and stuff like that. It's kind of nice. Uh, most of the lawyers uh, don't communicate with, with the realtors after um, we've sent them the documents and given them the, the client's contact information. Uh, so to have that update of where we're at in the, in the process is, is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I do like that. Also, Chris has allowed us to be a drop off or his office to be a drop off location for our hamper bin. So, uh, <laughs> so that's keep that, awesome. keep that in mind. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's been great. So um, what's the deadline that we have for the hampers then for drop off? The 11th of December. Okay. Yeah. And um, my other pick is Sud City, which is a laundromat. And uh, <laughs> and yes, I do have my own washer and dryer at home. But Sud We're City back is to this topic about cleaning clothes. It's never going to go away. <laughs> no, no. There's always something else. I have two little dogs who, I don't know, these two seem to get sick so often. And you have no idea how many times it's well on my bed. <laughs> and they it's like they go there because it's comforting and then puke. <laughs> and, uh, so I have a huge king size bed cover that will not fit in my heavy duty machine. Um, I do my heavy duty machine will fit most king size uh, covers, but not this really big one I have in the winter. And uh, I had it on my bed a couple of weeks ago for some reason. And one of them, of course, got sick on it. And uh, so I took it into Sud City. And what I love about Sud City is, um, A, she's very, like, I usually leave it for them to, to wash and then go pick it up. And so she'll text you when it's time to pick it up and whatever. But they also have a form and le to let you pick, like, what kind of detergent, what kind of, um, I, I want to say bounce, but I don't use bounce in my laundry. I'm allergic to it. So like I can actually check no bounce, scent free, everything. Right. And they've never made a mistake. Um, and I get like hives and everything from that stuff. So that's really important to me. <laughs> and uh, so to have a place that I can take stuff, you know, when my laundry my washing machine head <laughs> broke one time. I laughed because I it was my fault. It was totally my fault. I put my camping pillows in it, completely not thinking of the fact that one of them was gel. Oh, so then great. you basically have like a 500 pound rock in your washing <laughs> machine. <laughs> so it pounded <laughs> out. And I had left the house to go check on a listing we had. And when I came home, it my washing machine was literally like pounded out like on all four sides and, and it didn't shift away. your washing machine at all oh yeah it had come out from the plumbing too so my husband was like oh no i hope it didn't wreck the plumbing and and it was a mess it was awful oh, it anyway sounds like it's awful. And, and, it, and it was during covid so you couldn't it was hard to get washing machines right anyway costco to the rescue again um <laughs> sponsor of the podcast costco <laughs> sponsor, sponsor of our own guests um <laughs> but yeah they but in the time it took to get one because i think i still went without it for like three or four weeks sud city was amazing at getting my laundry done and they'll even do a whole wash and fold <laughs> wash dry and fold yeah wow. um, <laughs> so you can literally pick it up completely done and ready to put away <laughs> and i love how they find or your needs your specific needs are still met and not shown by the wayside and to say yeah that. when we That's travel I, like, it makes me appreciate them so much more when we travel because when you travel you'll have them agree yeah we'll do scent free yeah we'll do scent free <laughs> and i don't know it, it's so frustrating you come back to pick up your laundry and like i can't even bring it in the car with me <laughs> right? oh. because it smells so bad and oh. and i say bad i mean it's 
whatever to me it just smells like chemicals i'm sure to everyone else it smells whatever it's supposed to smell like mm. but uh, but because i'm allergic to it it smells bad um <laughs> it's just so, amplified that much more yeah it doesn't smell like what is it fresh rain or whatever it just smells like chemicals to me and uh <laughs> smells so like then, hives it smells like i'm gonna have hives yeah <laughs> and, see i'm itching just talking about it um <laughs> <laughs> well, then we better switch topics. Don't think about laundry. <laughs> Don't think about my smelly laundry. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, so that was Sun City, and they they have been amazing. Every time I take my laundry there, they do a great job. And, That's good. Uh, and you can also do your own laundry there. <laughs> you oh, I'm glad. You... And pick it up. <laughs> yeah. There's probably a little bit of an extra cost to get them to. It wasn't to wash terrible. It when I would t send, like, I mean, again, we're only two people, but we still have lots of laundry, right? Um, you know, towels and whatever else. Um, so, like, when I was dropping it off, I don't remember spending more than 20 bucks. And I'm pretty sure it would have cost me at least 10 to do it myself. Wow. <laughs> right? So, I'm like, mm, if I can go and get work done and then come back and just pick it up, that's worth 10 bucks to me. That's a pretty easy investment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, especially if, you know, you don't have the time to sit there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because usually when we're doing laundry at home, we're able to do other things. Right. Yeah. But then you have to spend the time to put it away and fold it or whatnot. Yeah, exactly. And if it's already folded, then you're one half yeah, the battle. You're, you're most way there, yeah. So you have a couple picks uh, as well. I do. So my first pick is... McNally Robinson bookstore. Which I love. So I know it's kind of <laughs> ironic because I've only been really getting back into reading over the last, I want to say half a year, maybe oh, yeah. year tops. When I was younger, I used to read a lot. And then during my high school years, I don't think I, besides the book that a teacher gave me in my spare time, I didn't pick up a single book ever. Yeah. I don't know if that's just a teenage thing to do. No, I think or, it, or, everyone goes through stages in life. Cause yeah, there's definitely years where I barely read anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I did not read, did not read a lot. And then I always loved reading about books that help me either communicate better or understand people better. Or like nonfiction is my, is my genre. I'm not big into fiction. I love learning about other people and hearing their stories and stuff. So that's my, yeah, that's my jam. So I love going to McNally Robinson and the store on Grant. I haven't been to the store on in the Forks yet, but the oh, one yeah. on Grant is great. The one on Grant. Always have tons. Yeah, tons of selection. Yeah. So whenever I'm picking up a few new books, I always always head that way. Yeah, it's always great to pick up your books, and they all also sell like so many local products and stuff. So if you like to have a snack while you read, um, I always find they always have something really great and local and new that you haven't tried yet <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah they have that little cafe in there still yeah they also have the cafe yeah that's amazing yeah mm -hmm. so that's a shout out to that business and then the other one is caddy shed golf store on portage avenue there and yeah. that one is very unique in the sense that there's not a big golf store like golf town is yeah. and for someone who's maybe wanting to get into the sport doesn't want to buy something new they have a ton of used stuff as well as mm -hmm. they do have a selection of new stuff and darren and scott there those guys are so personal they're great and if even if you have clubs of your own that you want to go and trade they'll always give you a price give you a credit to the store and then you can go out and choose something of your liking whatever you want to get yeah. and you don't see too many you know locally run stores similar to that these days yeah and i i've always gone there i know buddies in my hometown they support them yeah. even that they're not locals of, of winnipeg but so personable always willing to work within your needs and awesome. and give you give you great prices too which yeah. when you get into expensive hobbies similar to golf and and whatnot yeah. you're always looking to save a penny or two if you can for sure mm -hmm. so they're those guys are great. That's amazing. I got to get out and explore some more local businesses now that I'm considered a Winnipeg resident. 
<laughs> well, there are definitely many. <laughs> that yeah. yeah, that there is. Yeah, for sure. So, Perfect. yeah. Anything else you want to sprinkle in here? I don't know. I think that's everything. I think so. Yeah. Sorry, just looking at my notes to see if I, <laughs> we missed anything. No, yeah. that's all. That's all good. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for watching and make sure you uh, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching the Boshcast. And we'll see you on the next episode, probably with James, not me. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see about that. Thanks, Rhett. Yeah, thanks, Denise. Bye.